Hello everyone and welcome to today's latest solar build that I'm sure you're going to love. For those that enjoy the sun bracers and are preparing for solar 3.0, this build will give you the rightful power that you deserve and really does offer a lot on the table for you. I'm talking a 25% weapon buff for solar weapons and then a 35% weapon buff that you can activate for even more damage over time, constant wells, warm iron cells and grenades galore. We don't know how Solar 3.0 will play out just yet, but using this as a template should give you a good idea as to how to heavily lean into the build and benefit from it greatly once we know what their fragments and aspects will be. But you know what else is lean, mean and is a fighting machine? This channel right here, so if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like, a sub and for you to turn on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we'll be using the Tomb of the Sky and combining this with the Sun Bracers so that we can actively get more usage out of them. Now many of you may be already aware of this, but the issue with the current subclass tree is that it's mainly more geared towards PvP rather than PvE, with its movement based abilities. Although the other trees may be more beneficial, the middle tree is more based on support so you'll need to play a more supportive role, while bottom tree is good but not for melee based exotic since its perks are rather limited in their capacity. And Igniting Touch can one shot but only if the enemy is already weakened, plus you have to get up close and personal to activate it as well. With some braces being used we can use the Entombment of Sky Celestial Fire perk which hits hard, tracks and can one shot the majority of enemies at around 7 plus meters at a decent safety. Although mobility isn't that useful in PvE unless in much higher tier content, it can still offer us some room for escape if need be. Now once we get Solo 3.0 we can review this area again and hopefully be more in depth in terms of customization. So for stats and mods we have a 16 discipline and 17 strength and this should be everything that you'll really need to aim for as these will be constantly used and rotated on. For mods we have Phantom Might for the 25% Solo Weapon Damage buff, Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds via grenades, well of life for instant health regen over a period, war mine protection for reducing the incoming damage from combatants who are near it, and wrath of Rasputin which allows us to create war mine cells via solar splash damage. As shown here, we can customize this to our liking as these sun braces are easy to activate and offer us a ton of benefits once paired with the mods. I decided to add in the war mine cells to the mix as they have long been forgotten about, but also benefit greatly from these solar AoE effects the build can produce. We can switch more to be more elemental world focus or all my cells focus on demand and either way you look at it, nothing else will need to change. This is great as come Solo 3.0 we can use this fact to easily create multiple setups for different environments and no matter what weapons or mods are used, the main basis of the setup will still stay the same. For weapons now we have the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Steady Hand and Bait and Switch perk and the main perk you want to have for this is the Bait and Switch perk which offers players a 35% damage buff once active. Now for this to work you need to do a bit of damage with your secondary and heavy and then switch back to the main primary, fire at a given target and you'll get that damage buff for 10 seconds. This is actually good for a primary weapon as that damage boost is no joke, I can eat through ultra the mini boss's health while active and it's easy to activate as well. Having a primary weapon with Vorpal helps as well, but I've noticed quite a few people are sleeping on this version for the fusion as its primary weapon only. Getting a radiant near fusion with the perk will offer more damage on the get go, but if you're after something with more good range and damage all in one, then try and get this one before anything else. For secondary I'm using the summoner with moving target and wellspring and this is a really great AR to grind for as it's a 600 RPM monster in the right hand. It can do some pretty good damage once you get the ball rolling on it and then once you get your front of might active it will do even more damage at a sustained pace. Now depending on what you're after you may want to go with a version like mine which allows stickier aim and energy build up over time but at the same time going for a version with damage perks instead can also help if you aren't activating front of might constantly. Alternatively the explosive personality grenade launcher would also make the build really good with some of the perks they can roll with such as the ones shown on screen. You'll need to swap out your primary, but of course you probably know that already. For heavy, I've chosen you the Gallahorn because why not? It only makes the most sense with how damn powerful it is against everything you face. Now adding on front of might to the mix is just borderline WMD territory that we're crossing, but it's effective nonetheless. As heavy is more down to the user, you are free to choose something else more fitting for the build, such as the Kojuela rocket launcher with auto loading holster or even Palomar B with explosive light, as that can pack a punch, although you will be losing out on the damage buff. 
Now onto the stats, and as mentioned, your main focus will be your discipline and strength, as these two in hand will be doing the work. Now on the basis of the build, for us to get near infinite grenades being spammed, your strength stat needs to be the highest out of everything else and have the most amount of mods given for it so it can do its work very well. For this, I have double momentum transfer mods as these when active will greatly generate energy for a midi in one single grenade and it works a charm. As you can see from some of the clips, a single grenade will give at least 15 to 20 energy back to you and by the time it's done, you'll either have a full midi energy back or you'll be near practically done. You also want to add on the absolution part so you can get your energy back as well and that should cover you in terms of quick ability buildup within a few seconds. Of course, we have Wells helping us out as well, but the momentum transfer perk is really what's keeping the build together. Only downside to this is if you decide to play any content with champions involved, you'll need to switch one of the mods out or use a weapon that has the following anti-champ mods built into it. For grenades, we have Elemental Worlds helping us out in general and the Absolution perk as well. I recommend though you add on the explosive finish mod as this can and will help you with getting your grenades back if you use your melee at the wrong time. This will take one fifth of your super, but I have also added on the acid to acid mod for us to generate super energy back quickly through grenades alone, so this will help with the negative effects it will pull off. This will also mean that the loot and finish mod will also proc and create heavy for us, so it's all a win win as long as you don't abuse it. Left over wise, we have this solar siphon mod which allows us to generate orbs of power via solar weapon kills and walk along the scavenger mod for increased rocket reserves. Now, as we have this bit covered, here are the mods all compiled into a list for quick viewing. For head, we have resilience, ashes to assets, solar siphon, and frontal might mod. Arm, we have minor strength, momentum transfer times two, and elemental ordnance mod. Chest, we have strength, thermal shot plating, concussive dampener, and well of life mod. Leg, we have strength, rocket launcher scavenger, absolution, and warmind protection mod. Bond, we have minor strength, loot and finisher, explosive finisher, and wrath of Rasputin mod. So when it comes down to it, this build will cover a lot of areas when you need to focus on just attacking and keeping everything down. Having your grenades rain hell onto everyone that faces you, which then feeds back into you getting your meat energy back, and then producing one myself, which can either help or outright destroy your companions near it, offer us every sort of solution needed for endgame content. The Sun Bracers have and always will be the best exotic for us to use for solar warlocks for how simple they are in terms of activating them. And from that, you can do whatever you like with your build as it won't impede on the performance of the exotic. Take my build as an example. My build is simple and straightforward and offers me the damage I need to take out champions on legend without the need of champion mods. The mods that follow are simple as well and they focus on damage at the highest and a bit of survivability mixed in so a general standard build for a new light -like player which have the mods to back them up. However, if I wanted to, I could add in mods that provide me damage resistance alone and cater it more for in-game content. Or if I wanted to, I could add a build that focuses on support and friendly teams through simple methods of generating tons of wells and using the cells to debuff others. But at the end of it all, the sun bases still stay the same, no matter how much changes are made. And this is something I like to bring up a lot for players as you don't need to watch multiple videos to find a build that suits all the playstyles you have. Having one build that branches off into multiple can help players save time and effort and new players don't have to worry about not having a specific mod as that can be implemented at a later date. Although a lot of this is down to Bungie and how well they design their exotics but they do a very good job of it for us creators. Does the build hold up in endgame content like GMs and master content? Not so much but that's because of the limitation of subclass and survivability. Once we get an idea as to how Solo 3.0 works I can see the setup being crazy good if we get fragments that allow us to generate energy faster or focus more on the healing aspect when using our solar. Definitely a build to place on the back burner until then, but also a build worth trying if you want to cover an area in the field of flames. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.